This is the reflection of perfection on the number one selection, TRP. Damn, I look good. Welcome back to Fight Night as we continue with our tribute to the ill-fated 2012 United States Olympic men's boxing team. Up next is the team's bantamweight, Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. The future world featherweight champion got a start in the amateur ranks and defeated Oshaki Icewater Foster in the Olympic trials. He took second place in the qualifying tournament to get to London and actually beat Pavlo Ishenko in the first round. Naturally, he was beaten by the top-seeded, eventually silver medalist Cuban, Leva Lazaro Alvarez. Yeah. In the second. His pro career has been the opposite of his amateur days, winning world titles. Since I couldn't find early fights, the one I picked was from February 22, 2018, at the Fantasy Springs Casino in Indio, California. The bout was for the NABF and NABO featherweight titles, the minor ones, and the 25-0 DS took on 38-4-2 former world bantamweight champion Victor Terrazas. Will Diaz improve the 26-0 or will the former champion Diaz's first loss? Let's find out. Let's go to the tail of the tape presented by Tecate, which is Joseph the Southpaw. Same reach for these two fighters. We are ready to go with our main event, Bethel Duran, Bernard Hopkins, and now joined by the old boy though, Oscar De La Hoya. Oh, De La Hoya himself is going to be our commentary. I have, and uh, I strongly feel that he's ready for anybody uh, in the world, uh, including uh, the champion, uh, Gary Russell Jr., who he's been waiting for for uh, quite a while now. But uh, this test here uh, is going gonna, is gonna to be very telling because he has somebody in front of him who uh, 
has experience, who is an ex-world champion, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Victor Terrazas in all black. Alright, so Diaz Jr. is a southpaw. He's gonna come get his eye on him. Bernard Hopkins. He doesn't want to wait for that world title. Uh, if anybody, nobody wants to fight him, uh, then he's going to stay active and then take on tough opponents like the Razzas, who's an ex world champion. And uh, look, I mean, Jojo Diaz is ready for anybody. And you know, you know what Asuka said is just to make this a good point because you want to keep the mind fresh also. You know, you got a title shot coming. You know, you're so, so, you know, anxious, but. Oh, Diaz catches him with a big left hand. Oh, he dropped him. He dropped him. He's down. He devastated him with a body shot. Oh, he almost didn't get up. All right, so he said he, he hit him when he was down. That'll cost you a point next time. Ooh, that was a big left hook. And then the left hook drops him again. He said, watch out, 126. Watch out, Gary Russell. That's the former Bantamweight champion of the world Diaz is knocking in the next week right now. Ding, ding, in the round one. That was impressive. Right, round two. Leo Santa Cruz is there. Terrasa is the stop by him in the third. Gary Russell is there. Oscar Valdez is there. Stop the vision. And Joseph wants to fight them all. He just wants to kill. <laughs> Joseph wants to fight them all. He wants to fight everybody, but he doesn't want to fight him. That's the question. And I like the, uh, I like the instructions that they gave Terrasa. Smother him. Go in there and just throw punches. He's waiting with he's waiting with radar. Still 
see that body work, don't you, Oscar? I actually don't because I'm sitting next to uh, my partner who gave me a good body shot. One of my fights. You left yourself open. <laughs> De La Hoya Hawkins. Sorry to bring up old stuff, man. Troublemaker. <laughs> Troublemaker. <laughs> you know, it's certainly one has in a cage. Somebody has a strong chin and has the experience to move from those punches when they're coming at you. You know what they say in boxing, the body doesn't move. Go for the body and uh, the head will, will fall. And that's exactly Go for the body and the head falls. Ten seconds in the round. And the round two. And ding ding round three. Jojo's told in the corner by his trainer father, he's told to go soft and let the punches go light and then sweep one in. So I had him do it over and then shove and slam it because he was, you know, let power come off the first two shots. And the veteran knew that. The veteran was right before eventually in this, so he must throw punches and let the last two break the ones that hurt. Yeah, that's great. Oscar Valdez versus Scott Quigg, Mar Saturday, March 10th. This is four years ago. Oh, big left hook, big left hook, big right hook. Oh, Diaz is landing at will. This is not. This is not going to last much longer at this rate. He's just nailing it with combination after combination. Oh, body shot. Body shot. He didn't like that one. Four. Seven. Eight. He's not going to make it. Nine. He's done. Ten. That's it. Well, that was impressive. He's after you. And there's no hiding anymore, that's for sure. He said he was gonna put on a show. He said he was That's how you get it done. That is how you do it. He he needed to win that fight impressive, and he did. Oh right to the short ribs. Here's the replay. Bang! 
under his elbow and hits him perfectly, perfectly delivered. What a great, beautiful body shot. That's it. All right, we're going to have to wait around for the decision. All right, so. Wow. That was the biggest win of JoJo's career right there, taking out the former Bantamweight champ in impressive fashion. Diaz would eventually win the World Featherweight title and most recently fought back in December of 2021. Still, his pro success is great, but failing to win a medal in London was a sign of the times. Amateur in boxing in America was hitting rock bottom through various reasons. Some of it was financial, other was better competition, other was just bad coaching, whatever you want to call it. But either way, this was the beginning of the end for American boxing that is just now getting a rebirth. So, that's it for this edition of Fight Night. I'll see you next time.